Last week, we spoke about the sure mercies of Christ. Somebody say mercy. And we understood in so many words that mercy is not receiving something you deserve. It means that maybe you have done something wrong. You have committed an error. You made a bad choice when you were growing up. You did something that you deserve punishment. You deserve to be ostracized. You deserve to be killed. You deserve to be thrown into hell. But because of mercy, you did not get that thing, that punishment. You did not get that shame that you deserve. Amen. Then we realize also that grace is receiving something you don't deserve. God is so good. So he take away what you deserve, that's the punishment, and he give you the blessing that you don't deserve, brokenness, the distraction, and he has given you what you don't deserve, that is blessings, long life. You see, when you are wondering how it can happen, that is when you are not able to say, thank you Jesus, I receive it. It is called supernatural. How it will happen, sometimes you don't even know. But all of a sudden, out of nowhere, you find yourself behind the Jericho wall. It was by just a simple shout. He said, march around it. Don't think about how it will come down. Don't think about bulldozers. Matter of fact, bulldozers has not been manufactured yet. You see, some of you, you have been so much conditioned to live in the natural. Am I speaking to anybody? When they put you through school, everything they were teaching you, they were modeling your heart and your mind. You saw everything in the natural. So what you can see in the natural, it looked like it's, it's not real. It looked like it cannot happen for you. So you begin to doubt. You begin to wonder, how is it going to happen? Some of us, all we say is that seeing is believing. But I came here to tell you as people of faith, it is believing that caused us to see what we believed. Am I speaking to anybody? It is believing that brings manifestation. Why should you expect something that you already seen? It's already there. I see the chair already. I don't have to expect the chair. It's already there. But I expect that this place will be overflowing with souls because I am believing in the word that the Lord spoke before we even arrived here. I am believing in the word the Lord spoke before I was formed in my mother's womb. Before Moses was Moses, God was already calling him a deliverer. The man did not even know how to swing a sword. The man was running away. So God was telling the people, I am making you a deliverer that will come and transport you out of this place. So God is obviously seeing what you don't see. My God. You see, your eyes is limited. Am I speaking to anybody? Your vision is limited. Nobody in this place can see outside these walls right now. But even today, technology is making things I can see through the wall. The army can be 20 miles away. Point a laser in your house and see you doing. They have a machine at the airport that see inside your belly. And you think your God cannot see what's ahead of you. Your confessions will bring everything to you. Hebrews 4.16 Let us then, with confidence... Draw near to the throne of grace. Somebody say, with confidence. You see, some of us come to church. Uh, well, the pastor told me I should come. That is why I'm coming. No, with confidence. Somebody say, I came with confidence. I came to approach the throne of grace. That I may obtain mercy. I will receive mercy. And find grace. To help in time of need. How many of you need something? Oh, I need a lot. <laughs> the cherubim with many hands and wings cannot even contain what I want. I want everything. 
I want it all. Hallelujah, somebody. John chapter 8, verse 1 to 11. Somebody say, Holy Spirit, speak to me. So the Bible says, Jesus returned to the Mount of Olives. But early the next morning, he was back again at the temple. The crowd soon gathered and he sat down to teach them. As he was speaking, watch. As he was speaking, the teachers of the religious law and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in the act of adultery. They put her in front of the crowd. Watch this. Mercy is such an interesting thing. We just learned that mercy takes away what you deserve. So with the Pharisees, with the scribes, with the teachers of law, they did not have anything in their heart called mercy. Am I speaking to anybody? Sometimes the community that you live in, sometimes the family that you come from, sometimes the friends that you belong to, they don't have anything called mercy in their heart. They are always looking for the next person they can catch. The Bible said the woman was caught in adultery. It, it means that the woman did not go himself to say, this is what I did. But there were surely people looking for somebody that they can catch. Somebody they can trap. Somebody they can expose. Somebody they can lay hand on and bury. The Bible says the devil's first job is to point accusing fingers. The devil is always accusing. He's always lying. He's always looking for the next person that he can blame. Are we together? So they said, we caught this woman in adultery. They put the woman in front of the crowd, meaning that they were ready to shame that woman. Today I came to announce to you, how many people are ready to expose your weakness? You know that it is something that you are struggling with. You yourself, you admit and you are crying out. Even Paul said, my God, there is this thing with me that I don't want. Take it away from me. Even he was crying for mercy. And Jesus said, my grace will be sufficient. So everybody is struggling with something. Somebody say, I am struggling with something. We all have things that we are not proud of. We all have things that we want Jesus to take care of. Hallelujah. So they caught this woman and they brought her. They were pointing to her errors. They were pointing to the things that she has done. Already she herself feeling sorry for herself. Already she's not proud. Already she's going through emotional stress. She's going through trauma. She's going through shame. She's going through it all. To tap it off. The whole crowd is against her. Imagine how she was feeling. Imagine what she was going through. Now they brought her and they were ready to humiliate her. They were ready to punish her. They had set their heart in motion with evil agendas so they can feel good about themselves. Am I speaking to anybody? There is a hand that is accusing you because that hand wants to feel good about himself. He wants to feel that, oh, I am the one, the most righteous one and I am the only one doing the right thing. Accusing fingers. Humiliation. Evil agendas of the enemy. Somebody said their evil agenda will not work. So they said, teacher, this woman was caught in the act of adultery. The law of Moses say to stone her. You see? These people, they knew the law to stone somebody who has been caught in adultery. But it don't take only one person to commit adultery. It takes a man and a woman. Why did they leave the man home and brought the woman? That alone
alone disqualifies the judgment that they are pronouncing. It is only God who can give a righteous judgment. That is why God said, leave the judgment to me. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah, somebody. The law of Moses says to stone her, what do you say? After they asked that question, they kept on. The Bible says in verse 6, they were trying to trap him into saying something they could use against him. You see, it is not only the woman that they are trying to punish. My God. They don't like Jesus. So they are using the woman as a sacrifice. <laughs> as a meat on the altar. They are using the woman as a snare, as a trap, as a tool. So they can get to Jesus. There are times that you may not even be at fault. There are times that you may not even do what they are saying you did. But it's just because they are trying to recruit people to be a part of their evil agenda. They will accuse you wrongfully so they can use you to ensnare the next person they are trying to get to. The Bible said they wanted to trap Jesus. They were angry. They were mad at Jesus. They wanted to get rid of him. So now they are seeing a woman caught in adultery and they are bringing the woman. So Jesus will either say, stone her or don't. Now, when Jesus says stone her, it means that the woman is losing her life. But you know what was going to happen? It will mean that Jesus is breaking the law of the Romans. So then they can stand by the governors and accuse Jesus that he passed the judgment for somebody to be stoned. So they got him there. And when Jesus said don't stone her, it will mean that he has overlooked the law of Moses. And also, they will call it blaspheming. And in the same breath, they will be able to accuse him. So whether Jesus say yes or no, he is guilty. My God, today, may anybody who is standing uh, against your life, uh, anybody who is lifting a finger against you, uh, anybody who is trying to get rid of you, uh, anybody who is praying for your downfall, uh, may the judgment of the Lord uh, come upon that evil spirit. Uh, may Lord arise uh, and cause your enemies to scatter. May the Lord dismiss them one by one in the name of Jesus. Look at the situation. Whether he say kill him or don't kill him, he is guilty. But the Bible says Jesus was wise. Jesus was filled with the spirit. So Jesus stooped down and wrote in the dust with his finger. Even as he was writing, these people were pressuring him. Say something. Do something. What are you going to do? Let's get rid of this woman. What did Moses tell you? What is God saying? Pressure. There are people who have been pressured to fire you at work. There were people who were pressured to take away what belonged to you. There were people who were pressured to destroy your life. Even though they did not want to do it, they found themselves in, a, in an awkward position and they could not say no. Today I prophesy over your life. Even in a room that you are not, when your name gets mentioned, uh, may somebody arise uh, and speak on your behalf. Uh, it is not always when you are there that people should praise you. Uh. For God is the defender of the defenseless. Amen. So the verse 7 said they kept demanding an answer. You see, one sad thing in life is that when you have nobody to speak for you, you may not even be guilty. There are many people in prison right now who are not guilty, but they are there because they could not afford a good lawyer. How many times you saw on TV that they released somebody who had been in prison, incarcerated for 60 years? The person spent all his life. He is retired now, broken already almost dying and now they say evidence came out that he is innocent what is he going to do with his life now even if they gave him all the money in the world his life is already wasted that money can only go to friends and family they can enjoy but he has gone through the trauma and everything just because he could not afford a good lawyer 
We have people who can afford a lawyer today. They will burn down your house and still have a good lawyer to defend their case. And you will end up having to even pay them for burning your house. Evil agenda of the enemy. Evil practices of the system. Hallelujah, somebody. So Jesus stood and he said, all right, all right. <laughs> Let the one who has never sinned throw the first stone. Ask your neighbor, where is your stone? And tell your neighbor, drop it. <laughs> tell your neighbor, drop that stone. Tell your neighbor, drop it. Your hand is heavy. <laughs> Jesus was flawless in preserving both the Roman and the Jewish law whilst uncovering the evil intentions of the heart of the people who were accusing the woman. Hallelujah, somebody. So when he spoke to them and he said, let the one with no sin cast the first stone. Then he went down again. The Bible said the accusers began to drop their stone one by one. Immediately they all realized that they have sinned. They all realized that life is not like how they see it. They all realized that they are guilty of the same thing. They are standing on to kill somebody. So they dropped their stone and they began to leave one by one. They began to leave one by one. Now watch what happened. After they had all left, the woman was left alone with Jesus. I came here to announce to you what your enemies don't know is that what they are doing will bring you to a direct encounter with Jesus. They were thinking that, you know, they were having a field day. They were excited. They were happy. We got him. The Bible says, rejoice not my enemies. When I fall, I shall rise again. Rejoice not over me, my enemies. Even when I fall, I will rise again. They were rejoicing. They said, we got this woman. We will use her as an example. We will kill her. So let's go. They carried her. Let's go. Today we will kill you. And they were carrying this woman. Little did they know that they had become an instrument. They had become a car. They had become a transportation, a means of transportation for the woman to encounter Jesus. The woman on her own might not have gone to Jesus and she would have been perishing in hell. The woman alone might never see Jesus and she would have never been delivered even from that spirit of adultery. So you think you are losing so much because you are sick. But I came to tell you, you have it all to gain when you let that problem drive you to God. That's why Job said, though he slay me, hey, Akataliba, though he slay me, I will trust in him. Though I am sick, I will trust in him. Though I am broke, I will trust in him. Though they are shaming me, I will trust in him. And what happened? The end result was beautiful. I came to announce to you that there is no sin that any one of you, all of us, even all our sins together, put together, that can overcome the mercies of God. Am I speaking to anybody? Sometimes you sin and you even want to pray and the devil is accusing you. Oh, God is not listening to you. God is not hearing you. Remember what you did last night. Uh, remember what you said. Uh, remember how you were angry. And the enemy accused you so much. Uh, no, you are standing before the father and you can't talk to the father. You are filled with guilt. You are filled with shame. Uh, but I came to announce to you, uh, this is the moment uh, that will leave you one-on-one -on -one with Jesus. One-on-one uh, -on -one with the woman Woman did not make an appointment, uh, but the woman found her face uh, herself uh, standing face to face with Jesus. Uh, the woman did not have to make an appointment, she did not have to pray and fast. It was her shame, uh, her accusers that made the appointment with Jesus. Her accusers stopped Jesus uh, in his busy schedule uh, so they can get the woman in front of may my enemies 
Send me to Jesus. Somebody say, God is working in my situation. Somebody say, the victory is mine. So the woman found herself standing in front of Jesus without even having to fast and pray and call and cry. And Jesus asked her, woman, where are your accusers? Somebody look around you and say they are dismissed. Am I speaking to anybody? Listen, words are powerful. You might be going through what you went through or what you are going through because of an error that you made. We all make wrong choices. Hallelujah, somebody. We all make bad decisions. Hallelujah, somebody. We all have made mistakes before. Who in this room has never made a mistake before? No, 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 no. And sometimes the mistakes we made uh, is biting us and taking a toll on our lives. Every time we want to rise, there go the enemy telling you of your past. These people brought the woman to Jesus talking about what she did a while ago or 10 minutes ago. But Jesus was looking at the woman in the now. That is the work of the enemy. They were thinking that when they bring this woman this woman will be shamed. But Jesus dismissed the people and he said, I too do not condemn you. Somebody say, I have not been condemned. Remember the Bible said the son of man came so he can redeem us, so he can reconcile us to God, the father, not to condemn us. Hallelujah, somebody. So today, if you are leaving this place and you think that you have been condemned. I came to acknowledge. I came to remind you. I came to bring your mind into remembrance that you have not been condemned. You have not been thrown out. You are standing before Jesus on this holy ground. Sir. And no amount of sin you made, mistakes, errors you made yesterday can work against you today. It is called mercy. Somebody say mercy. Somebody say mercy. Somebody say mercy. So Jesus said to her, go and sin no more. You see how Jesus works. Go. First, Jesus gave her freedom. Am I speaking to anybody? Because this woman was caught. She was surrounded. They were going to kill her. But here goes Jesus saying, go First, Jesus will free you from your guilt. He will free you from your humiliation. Most of us, do you know why we can't pray? We can't pray because even in prayer, the devil keeps pointing our errors to us. Our spiritual life is dead because whenever we go down and we want to talk to the Father, we believe that he don't hear us because we've been condemned already. Some of us have been condemning ourselves day and night. I came to announce to you, there is something called mercy. What you deserve, mercy will block it. That punishment, that condemnation, that guilt, mercy has already blocked it. God said, I will have mercy upon whom I chose. I came here to announce to somebody, tell the Lord, choose me today and have mercy upon me. Lord, have mercy upon my children. Have mercy upon my family. So Jesus spoke those words to her. She said, go. I free you from your guilt. I free you from condemnation. I free you from humiliation. And sin no more. She was delivered. She was restored to live a clean life. Now, my advice to you is that when it comes to forgiveness, it is in God's will that he will forgive you. But you must be accountable and responsible that from that moment, you will walk in righteousness and in holiness. Oftentimes, the greatest sinners are the greatest accusers. Am I speaking to anybody? The Pharisees, the teachers of the laws, they did not even know Jesus. So oftentimes, the greatest sinners are the greatest accusers. 
Amen. Number two, God specializes in taking the worst and transforming them into his trophies of grace. Am I speaking to anybody? Even though you have been condemned by people, even though they say nothing good can come out of you because you were once a prostitute, because you made a bad marriage choice, because you fell, because uh, something did not work for you, because you lost your job, because you were fornicated. Everybody is saying that your life is over, but I came here to announce to you, God specializes in taking that which the world has rejected, that which the world has cast a stone upon, and he turns them into trophies of grace. He makes them great. Somebody say, I am the apple of God's eyes. Somebody say, all things are working together for my good. Oh my God, my God, my God. My God, they were carrying this woman. They didn't know that she was becoming the eye of Jesus. After everybody was gone. How, how, how be it that she had a private session with Jesus? The man, everybody is looking for her, his attention. The Bible says, crowd were gathered even on that day. In that church service, everybody was dismissed. And I found myself alone with Jesus. Just alone, all by myself. I got all the attention I needed. I got to ask all the questions why my life is like this and why I need a change and Jesus is telling me now that I am not condemned how empowered you will feel after walking away from the presence of God you will step in the face of the Pharisees and you will tell them look at me now look at me I am the one you accused yesterday I am the one you were ready to kill I am the one you were ready to destroy look at my life now I am the one you said can any good thing come out of that girl that prostitute that woman whose children are stolen I am the one now look at me the bible say when the lord turned the captivity of zion we shall be like them that dream someday it will not be longer some of you will be pinching yourself asking yourself are you living in the real life because what the lord is about to do for you the trophy of grace the way how he's about to lift you up in spite of how many times you have fallen in spite of how many times you have been shamed when the lord turned your captivity when he turns it around uh, when he shake your foundation uh, when he scatter your enemies uh, oh that is when uh, you will see uh, what the Lord was doing they were setting a trap for you but God was using that trap to trap them oh, things are working for my good my God lift it up his intention yeah, yeah. his intention come on somebody wish him Hey, oh, working for my good. With your hands and worship. With your hands and worship. With your hands and worship. It's working for your good. It's a prophecy. Prophesy. Prophesy over your life. 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 Prophesy. Leke brakata. Leke brakata. Mandali moko shatala baba baba baba. In the name of Jesus. Us. Number three. Jesus was the only one among the church that day. Jesus was the only one who had not sinned among the congregation on that day. So he was the only one who had the right to cast a stone. But he was the one who did not exercise that right. Am I speaking to anybody? Everybody was exercising their right. They had stones in their hand. And they all had sinned before. Jesus had never sinned. But he did not exercise that right to cast away the stone. Hallelujah. So today, God will not shame you. Hallelujah. God will not condemn you. Hallelujah. God will not make your reproach work against you. Hallelujah. God will not leave you nor forsake you. 
because he is not exercising that right to destroy you am i speaking to anybody number four he said go and sin no more in christ there is forgiveness in christ forgiveness is first but in religion it is reversed am i speaking to anybody when you come to jesus he forgives before he even hears the matter why am i saying that is it biblical yes he died for your sins whilst you were even yet a sinner so he forgives you before he even hear the case he already established the legality to forgive you before you even ask for forgiveness he had put measures in place a system was placed a system was in place to forgive you but in religion they punish you before they even think of forgiving you sometimes they kill you before they even say ah that is why many people are in jail before 60 years later they say oh an evidence just came and we realize that you are not guilty after they have destroyed you they go back and try to free you by then your life is already destroyed i came to announce to you he who did not spare his only son and gave him as a ransom for him to die for your sins will he not graciously give you everything else am i speaking to anybody will god not give you everything else that you desire he spared his only son today we are about to pray one prayer before we leave this place i gave you this scripture romans 8 32 it says he who did not spare he did not keep his only son to himself he gave his son freely just so you and i will be redeemed will he not also graciously give you everything else you see how grace and mercy walk together where you find mercy you will find grace he mercy will stop the punishment you deserve grace will give you the blessings you don't deserve but god told me to tell you today that one thing he's going to add to your life from this day is favor 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 yeah yeah am i speaking to anybody now watch what would favor do to you the bible say god arise and show your people mercy for the time to favor her has come lord arise and show your people mercy for the time to favor her has come so mercy comes favor is in there grace is in there what is favor favor is god's way of adding flavor to your life Am I speaking to anybody? Some of us, our lives have been bitter. The people who are supposed to help us, when they taste us, they go, P -p 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 -p. they don't want to help you because all they taste is bitterness. God is about to add spice to your life.